We're now going to create a tin of all our triangulable data. So in view number one, just make sure all our data is turned on. And then go to tins, create, triangulate data. In this instance, we're going to give it a, a function name, which allows us to re-triangulate it at a later date more easily. And we'll call it, in capital letters, tin ground. Make sure you hit enter to go to the next line and our new tin name will just be called ground and once again click enter to fill in the model for the tin. Under the data tab we're going to triangulate everything on view number one. Then click on the nulling tab and down the bottom here where it says null polygon we're going to select this boundary string around the outside so we simply click on the icon, pick and accept making sure that the whole string around the boundary highlights and you're not accidentally picking a point. Accept that and then click triangulate. Before we finish this panel off it's a good idea to turn on the tin and make sure that it was actually created. That looks okay so we can finish on that panel. Prior to checking this data as you can see it's a little bit hard to see our survey data behind the triangulation so we're going to move the triangulation to the back. We can do this two ways. Firstly we can go to the menu button, walk right on settings, walk right on models to back and select tin ground. Alternatively we can just go to the view button and go send tinned rasters to back. We zoom in now you can see quite clearly where our road strings are, our top and bottom of bank strings are, and where the triangles tie into it. If we zoom in over here, you'll note that our trees and our pipe underground here have not been triangulated to, and if we toggle on our Z values, as we saw previously with the survey stations, they have a height, but then they have in brackets NT, standing for non-tinnable. We can also check our contours to make sure that they are correct by clicking on the toggle button and selecting tin contours.